Check us out in Milwaukee at the Con Midwest Gaming Classic, April 29th to May 1st. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember it so you don't have to. So you're feeling young and full of life like you got years and years ahead of you, and you realize this came out 20 years ago. Then you're like... <laughs> Getting old sucks. Released back in June of 2002, Lilo and Stitch was following a line of animated Disney movies that were not pulling in the numbers they wanted. In a desperate attempt to fill seats, they resorted to a strange but memorable advertising campaign where Stitch would interrupt other classic Disney films. Though this had nothing to do with the story's plot, it did get some people laughing. I have questions about Jasmine. The ads worked as Lilo and Stitch became a decent hit at the box office, but in time it's become so much more. With three DVD sequels, a TV show, an anime, big deal, anyone could get one of those, and countless merchandise, Lilo and Stitch has surprisingly become bank. Ironic, seeing how a lot of Disney's more expensive movies at the time haven't gotten nearly as big a return. When I first saw it, I remember really loving the story between the sisters and found the alien stuff okay. I honestly felt like there was a quiet Ghibli film trying to get out, but it was being interrupted by the Smurf version of Gollum. But something happened over the years, they grew on me. And again, with all the Stitch memorabilia, it clearly grew on others, too. Through the sequels and TV show, I actually did find myself enjoying Stitch and his alien pals a lot more. So I'm curious if this likability was something I overlooked in the original, or if it was something that was added later in the additional spin-offs. Either way, it's gonna be fun looking over this gem again, and I'm excited to give it another look. So let's look this over before it becomes something crazy like a Broadway musical. They're making Lilo and Stitch a Broadway musical? I'm not watching this to see if that's really a thing. Let's take a look at Lilo and Stitch. We open at the Galactic Federation headquarters where the Grand Councilwoman, just named Grand Councilwoman, <laughs> discusses what's to be done with a mad scientist named Jumba, played by David Ogden Steers. Illegal genetic experimentation. Disney wants your head unless it can be turned into a purse. The experiment is named 626, voiced by co-director Chris Anders, and the council wishes to see if there's any good in him. <laughs> Only green aliens can use that word! The design of Stitch is pretty unique, and passes the silhouette test where if you only saw his shadow, you guess immediately who it is. He can also pass as both cute and threatening at the same time. I guess how many dogs can, which factors later into the story. <laughs> they try to banish him to an asteroid, but he escapes and steals a ship. Chubby Piglet says he's landing on Earth, Kawaii to be exact, and another alien named Pleakley, voiced by Kevin McDonald, tells them they can't harm the planet because of an endangered species called Mosquito. We've been using it to rebuild the mosquito population, which, need I remind you, is an endangered species! So I kinda have a love-hate relationship with this character. Every time his voice starts to get too annoying, he says something funny enough to keep me liking him. Similar to these characters. Quickly is sent to Earth with Jamba, who's offered his freedom for Stitch's capture. 626 six will not come easily. Wipe that smirk off your face! Where we're introduced to Lilo, played by Devay Chase. Every Thursday I take Pudge the Fish a peanut butter sandwich. And today we are out of peanut butter! And if her voice sounds familiar, it's because she played every little kid in the early 2000s. The reason? Well, she's really freaking good! From Lilo to Zen, she always finds a vulnerable believability that for other child actors would sound whiny. But she sells it because no matter what the subject, she always sounds like it's important to her. You what? Who would care about a fish eating a sandwich? I do when she's done talking about it! I can't give Pudge tuna! It's fish! If I gave Pudge tuna, I'd be an abomination! 
Fish Soil and Green would disagree. You're crazy. Oh, oh she's also a violent little shit. Lilo might be one of the most realistic Chow characters, not just in animation, but cinema in general. Because she is odd. Children are odd. She's also a troublemaker, but there's a relatable reason you can understand. Her parents are gone. So you can identify with her troublemaking oddness as well. No! I'll be good! I want to dance. I practice. With that said, she's also very sweet. After beating up that girl, she's like, oh, yeah, no prob, right? I don't know. Want to see this weird-ass shit I made that's everything to me? When they mock it, she throws it on the ground and leaves it, but fine, she can't because it means so much to her. Whoever wrote this either has, or at the very least, understands kids. I get why Stitch is on all the merchandise, but I assure you, if Lilo wasn't done this well, nobody would be buying them. She's where the real comedy and emotion comes from. If it was pretty much any of the kids from the previous Disney movies, their connection would not be as strong, and I don't think Stitch stuff would sell as great. Hey! Which way are you going? Speaking of which, I think a lot of adults can identify with her older sister, Nani, played by Tia Carrere. She stuck both raising Lilo and trying to keep a job, but the two don't exactly complement each other. Oh, I'm gonna stuff you in the blender, push puree, then bake you into a pie and feed it to the social worker. Things get worse when a social worker played by Ving Rhames named Cobra Bubbles. Because why normal now? Is noticing Nani is having a hard time coping, to say the least. Thus far, you have been adrift in the sheltered harbor of my patience. In a lesser film, he would be the bad guy. But there really aren't bad guys in this. There's just difficult situations. Cobra only cares about what's best for Lilo. Captain Gantu is a cop trying to protect the planet. Even the dude who proclaims himself an evil genius dresses up like Santa at the end. If you told me that going in, I'd say this movie's bullshit. But they make it work here because everyone is likable and, as I said, strangely believable. But simply, the characters are interesting enough that they don't need a villain to impact the drama. And for a studio with so many classic baddies to say, we don't need one here? That's really saying something. And yeah, okay, I guess I should talk about the dryer in the original being replaced with a pizza box. First off, they had it hard enough, but now these two don't even have a dryer. Second, in my opinion, this is where the P in PG comes into play. Because yes, there's gonna be things in this kid shouldn't do. But with that said, it doesn't really change the characters or story at all. I can see something like Han shooting first being worth talking about a little bit because it's changing the persona of the character and we lose a little something from him. We're not really losing anything about the characters with this change. And I guess it's to help stop a common accident, so I'm not really that peeved. The film is very clever to show after their outburst that these two really do care for each other. And that what's keeping them in their difficult place, their parents passing, is also what uniquely unites them to get through it. We're a broken family, aren't we? Maybe a little. The film's also very good at, I know this is going to sound strange, naturally emphasize over and over that they're sisters. In previous screenings, parents kept saying what a bad mother Nani was, despite them saying several times that the parents were dead. To fix that, they literally say the word sister three sentences in a row. We're sisters. I like you better as a sister than a mom. And you like me better as a sister than a rabbit, right? Again, in a lesser film, I feel like I'd be focusing more on how this setup doesn't work. I mean, it seems like they're showing very clearly she can't take care of the younger sister. But their chemistry is so good and their love for each other is so strong. Shit, I get teary-eyed watching these scenes a little bit. I mean, anyone with a weaker amount of strength would get teary-eyed at that scene. Yeah, where's that Grover the Hedgehog? Just as Lilo prays for a friend, Stitch crash lands and gets knocked out, resulting in the locals confusing him for a dog. You're all mine. <laughs> Aliens are growing on me, if for any other reason, the wanton destruction. I love that Jumbo would destroy his creation just as quickly as he made it, and even the alien's first reaction to him landing is gas the planet. Oh, we have to gas the planet. How are there this many alien species left if that's always their first solution? Stitch catches on and disguises himself as a dog, pretty much using Lilo as a human shield without her even knowing it. Yeah, there's some sick meanness that's winning me over. This is low even for you! After passing the Mulan walk. I want that Mulan McNugget sauce, Morty! Please, that's so 2017. 
and 1998 somehow. Stitch steals a kid's bike, which Lilo has no objections to, and realizes he's surrounded by water, which he doesn't react well to. Quick side note, if these backgrounds look different from other Disney films, it's because they're watercolor, reflecting Hawaii's tropical landscapes. It's not done often, but they use it in most Lilo and Stitch spin-offs, including the TV show. You can shake an apple off an apple tree. And I'm sorry, the cruel editor in me has to see if this will look as funny as I think it will if I cut it shorter. You can shake an apple off an apple tree. It didn't disappoint. See Doug play Jedi Fallen Order Fridays on Twitch. Hope to see you there. Nani is forced to bring Lilo to work, where she runs across her friend David, played by Jason Scott Lee. My, I just figured you might need some you time. Smell like a lawnmower. David is probably the only character that's bland in the movie and bland in the spin-offs. He's not bad, but he feels like he's there just to show Nani will eventually get help with Lilo. Jason Scott Lee can bring a lot to a role, which is why I kind of feel bad he's underutilized. But again, he's by no means a bad character. Don't worry, she likes her butt and fancy hair. She thinks it's fancy? Also, unless you plan to kick it, I don't think you can say butt in a Disney film. Pleakley and Jampa try to catch Stitch in an attack that, again for Disney, is a little intense. <laughs> He should look like Mike Wazowski after Sullivan ate him. Nani is blamed and fired from her job. Since Stitch seems way too out of control, Nani says she wants to get rid of him. And Lilo teaches us the only other Hawaiian word everybody now knows aside from aloha. Ohana means family. Family means nobody, nobody gets, gets left, left behind. Or... Or forgotten. I'm only keeping him because he legit likes the album Dream. I still can't explain why, but this look Stitch gives makes me laugh hard. It's a look that says, I don't know what you saw, but you didn't see it. <laughs> Stitch discovers with nothing to destroy, he has no purpose, so he tries to find some by reading bedtime stories like The Ugly Duckling. And yeah, I think it's pretty cool these designs are a callback to Disney's Oscar-winning short. Then The Ugly Duckling is happy, because he knows where he belongs. Okay, bullshit, Alan Giant has Superman, I have Ugly Duckling! Ah, I guess we're both ripping off E.T. anyhow. Yeah, that does bring up a good point. Despite the story having a ton of tropes that have been done to death, this still somehow does feel fresh and new. Both Chris Sanders and co-director Dean DeBlas have specialized in taking stories that you've heard a million times and breathe new life into them, almost making you feel like you're hearing them for the first time. I think a lot of that is the uniqueness of the characters and their quick relatability. These protagonists are completely different, these antagonists are completely different, and these supernatural characters are completely different. So it feels like an entirely new journey. We've been having a bad day. While trying to find a new job, they run into David, who decides to take them surfing. Stitch finds his fear of water fades the more he sticks around them. There's no place to be. Be. While a lot of people associate this film's soundtrack with Elvis, I dig how there's more traditional Hawaiian-style songs that make their way into this too. In fact, this film is praised quite a bit for how accurately they portray Hawaiian, particularly Kauai, lifestyle. No, I'm sorry, that's not a shave ice. Now that's a shave ice. Holy shit. Stitch gets dragged under the water and pulls Lilo with him. They survive, but Cobra sees the whole thing and decides to put Lilo in a different home. Cobra! Again though, I love how he's not being an asshole about it. He legit just wants what's best for her. I know you're trying, Nani, but you need to think about what's best for Lilo. No, no, didn't you see? She climbed into a pizza box, not a dryer! You know, I really believed they had a chance. Then you came along. Yeah, before Stitch showed up. <laughs> totally had a chance. This leads to a pretty emotional moment where Nani sings to Lilo, Aloha Oi. Again, in lesser hands, this could be botched so easily. Honestly, just saying that out loud, she sings Aloha Oi rather than say what's going on, actually sounds comical. But Tia Carrere's acting, some great animation, and refreshingly no music in the background can easily get you pretty choked up. 
Leakley and Jamba are taking too long, so they're fired. Which means Jamba can finally take Stitch his way. Hiding behind your little friend won't work anymore. <laughs> okay, when I measure the fact he doesn't care if a child gets caught in the crossfire, I'm liking these humorous but demented aliens more and more. With that said, I do think the climax of the film is a little underwhelming. I think they focus so much on the comedic and dramatic expressions that when it came to the action and slapstick, it's not super funny or exciting to watch. I just remember, it's your birthday! Happy birthday! <laughs> Merry Christmas! It's not Christmas! Happy Hanukkah! Don't get me wrong, there's one or two good laughs. Oh good, my dog found the chainsaw! Should be the last line of every Beethoven movie. But for the most part, it just needed to be faster and a bit more creative. Now, to the film's credit, there was a major change that had to be made. The original climax had Jumba and Pleakley teaming up with Nani and hijacking a plane to go after Lilo, who was accidentally taken by Captain Gantu. After 9-11 happened, though, the directors called up Disney and said, Don't worry, we're changing it. Seeing the original with a plane flying through the city, crashing into buildings? Yeah, this was probably a good change. With that said, seeing a spaceship just chase another spaceship isn't anything a lot of animation audiences haven't seen already. But again, with the time they had, it's not a bad workaround. Stitch gets Lilo out the Dr. Mario pill, but is ultimately captured in the end. They start to see, though, that he's not as dangerous as he has indeed grown a heart. This is my family. He says what every woman who's ever slept with me says. It's little and broken, but still good. Except that last part. And they decide to let him go. It also helps that Cobra knows about the aliens and even made up the mosquito story to keep Earth safe. CIA? Convinced an alien race that mosquitoes were an endangered species. <laughs> Why did you recognize Stitch as an alien right away? Oh god, not another Bobbleheads movie! Oh. The house is rebuilt to include Pleakley and Jamba. I laugh my ass off how much it looks like Stitch is smoking, and their family not only grows closer, but also bigger. That's right, they do add a dryer to their home. Oh, nobody's ever truly prepared! And that was Lilo and Stitch. For what I already thought was a really good movie, I will admit it is even better years later. Where several Disney films have a little bit of a dated feel in the early 2000s, this one still remains pretty timeless. Even the aliens who I thought were only okay originally are a little better when you compare how much mean-spirited violence is usually in their subtext. Granted, they're not as good as what they do with them later. I personally think they're much funnier in the show and spin-off movies. But it's not really about them as much as it is the title characters. Both Lilo and Stitch bring a solid amount of heart and comedy that's hard not to be charmed by. Even though this is an all-too-familiar story, hiding aliens, losing parents, the meaning of family, and so forth, it really is the uniqueness of the main characters and the delicate care of the filmmakers that makes it feel brand new. It's hard to believe people have been enjoying this for 20 years, but I know there's even more enjoyment coming up in the near and far future. I'm a nostalgia critic, I remember it so you don't have to. 6 to 6 will not come easily. Hey everybody, still doing cameo for charity. And this month, the money I receive goes to Razum for the Ukraine. If you want me to say happy birthday or best wishes or just about anything at all, go ahead and get a cameo from me and be giving to a good cause. And even if you're like, screw you, I don't want a cameo from you, check out the charity anyway. It's a wonderful one to donate to, or if you don't have money to donate, please consider at least spreading the word about the good that they do so that maybe others can help out. Thank you so much.